It's the 117th meeting between Ole Miss and Mississippi State. The Rebels have taken the field. Their run out is complete. Back-to-back -back games of 50-point performances for the first time in school history. In a moment to reflect before the beginning of their rivalry game. A rivalry that has seen absolutely everything in the history of this matchup that dates all the way back to 1901. And while the Rebels have taken the field and taken a knee, Mississippi State has yet to darken the door. The Bulldogs have a chance for a big upset today against an Ole Miss team that has lighted up the scoreboard. The kicker is back this year for Ole Miss. You saw Luke Logan a moment ago. It was his point after that was pushed back that missed the uprights and decided the fate of an Ole Miss coaching staff and set in turn motions that reverberated throughout the college football world. And now the boys from Starkville take the field and we are ready for the Egg Bowl. SEC Network Football is presented by Auto Owners Insurance Simple Human Sense. Lane Kiffin getting geared up and ready to go. His Ole Miss offense is running at high speed. And Mississippi State looking to pull, pull the upset. Welcome, everybody. Tom Hart, Jordan Rogers. To borrow from Faulkner to understand the college football world, you first must understand the Egg Bowl. I don't know if anybody gets it because this is a rivalry that has been simply absurd throughout the years and last year the height of absurdity what do you expect in this one the unexpected well there's bad blood in this history and there's new coaches but you better believe they're preaching about keeping your emotions in check we've seen that play a big role in how these games have transpired over the course of the history and especially last year so keep your emotions in check as much as possible will be preached early. Both head coaches have downplayed this rivalry to an extent, especially relative to what it means to the fan base. As Lane Kiffin said, listen, I've been part of big ones. Auburn, Alabama, USC, Notre Dame, USC, UCLA. To me, you can't put it too high on a pedestal. It's just the next game. And this is exactly what we wanted, right? SEC fans, you're getting it. Lane Kiffin. Mike Leach. This is a new era of SEC. The offense is taking front and center in this conference, and we should see a lot of it today. To stay on the Faulkner train, the past is never dead. It's not even past. And for Ole Miss wide receiver Elijah Moore, he would like to wave goodbye to last season, to move on from that past, and to introduce all of you to his present. Leading the nation in receiving yards, he is having a breakout season right now for Ole Miss. And it's pretty funny for a guy that got so much attention for what he did last year. He doesn't like the attention, even good attention, the attention he's getting for being the best receiver in the entire country. He should be in the Heisman conversation with a big game tonight. He could get back into that conversation, but the Bolitnikoff Award should go to Elijah Moore already. He's been that good. That's the story on the Ole Miss offense. Time to talk defense. For that, we go down in the field. Here's Cole Kubelik. You guys mentioned it is the giving season, and these two teams have been giving points on a weekly basis, but a little bit more Grinch-like on the defensive side of things for Mississippi State. Zach Arnett's group, a top-five defense in the Southeastern Conference, and he said it's not because of scheme. They move around, they blitz, they stunt as much as any defense in the nation. And I asked him, is it because of that scheme that these guys have been able to get as productive as they have been? He said, absolutely not. The leadership, especially leadership up front of guys like Errol Thompson, Kobe Jones, and Marquis Spencer, that early buy-in is the reason this Mississippi State defense has been as, sex as successful as it has this season. Luke Logan was at the center of the storm last year. And he will kick it off to get us started this season. And the Egg Bowl is underway from Oxford. No return and Mississippi State led by a freshman. Will Rogers grew up in Brandon, Mississippi. He grew up an old Miss fan of all things. And here he is starting as a true freshman, a quarterback for Mike Leach's Mississippi State Bulldogs. I tell you what, he has showed a ton of improvement. We saw last week against Georgia, extremely efficient. He's making quicker decisions. He's accurate. Comes from that air raid background in high school, but he's got a lot of young guys around him that are all learning alongside. I expect another step forward for this offense today. Dad was his offensive coordinator, also coordinated Gardner Minshew in the air raid. Minshew would go on to star for Leach 
in a year at Mississippi State. Rodgers to throw on first down. Nobody throws it more often than Mississippi State does. And he completes it for four yards on first down. These throws right here, keep an eye on. Because one thing Mississippi State has improved upon in the last few games is being patient. Teams are going to drop eight. They're going to play zone. They're going to keep everything in front of them. How patient can Will Rogers be early in this game, not forcing throws downfield into traffic? Rodgers got up to a great start in the Georgia game. He completed his first seven passes. They'll run it now with Jaquavius Marks, and he's hit at the line of scrimmage, and the Land Sharks got to him, and we have an early injury for Ole Miss as Tariqas Tisdale leaves the field after the first running play. And they're taking Tisdale back to the locker room immediately. That's a big loss for this Ole Miss defense, which has had a tough go at it already this season. Third and six. Rodgers has time, and out of the backfield, he's able to find Dylan Johnson, who takes it just shy of the marker, and that's going to leave fourth and one, it looks like. Oh, Mississippi State looks like there's not even a question here. Offense is staying out there. Fourth and short, head coach Mike Leach in Mississippi State. Well, you think with Ole Miss's struggle stopping the run that this would be a handoff to Jaquavius Marks, but with Leach, you never know. Tucker Day, the junior from Brentwood, Tennessee, to punt it away, and a fair catch asked for at the 27-yard line. And this electric Ole Miss offense will take the field after that 39-yard punt. Led by Californian Matt Corral. Talked to Lane Kiffin yesterday. He said, how were you able to connect with Corral so early? He said, I really think it's a California thing. We're both a couple of laid-back dudes. I told him what he's going to have an opportunity to do in this offense, and he has blown up, Jordan. Unbelievable numbers over the last two games especially. Isn't that how we connected so quickly? I'm a laid-back California guy. You're an uptight <laughs> Whatever I am. <laughs> no, but really, how could you not get together so quickly with how much Lane Kiffin loves to throw the football? That's a quarterback's dream. 59 of his last 66 for 925 yards. 10 touchdowns, no picks, and he finds his favorite receiver, Elijah Moore, as a flag comes in on the tail end after a 14-yard pickup on first down. Holding on the offense, number 84. That's a 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay, first down. The tight end, Kenny Yaboa, got caught with his hands in the cookie jar. That'll back up Ole Miss. You see Elijah Moore leading the nation in yards per game and 10 and a half catches per game. He has high expectations for himself. The goals are through the roof. He's got Amari Cooper's numbers scrawled on the back of his door. He said, every time I look at those numbers, it's motivation for me. A first and 14, Jerry and Ely. Big hole on the left side, and Ely surges forward for an Ole Miss first down. And one thing to watch early in this game is how do they cover Elijah Moore, right? That last snap, they had a safety on him in the slot. If I'm Ole Miss, I love that matchup, my best receiver on a safety. Saying there's Jonathan Mingo back in the act, look to his knees, and it's the loss of one on the completion to the Ole Miss wide receiver. Yeah, Minko so showed so much promise last year. He's a big body, 6'2", 215. You mentioned been injured, been out of practice. They'd love to get him back in the mix. Everybody's covered downfield, so it's Jerry and Ely, part-time outfielder for Ole Miss, and Mike Bianco's baseball team, who's able to pick up about eight on that time. On that time, it's going to leave third and medium, where Ole Miss is entirely unpredictable. And this is where Mississippi State wants to be unpredictable. Talking to defensive coordinator Zach Garnett, he goes, look, they bring eye candy motion. We need to do the same. A lot of movement up front, rolling coverage on the back end to try to confuse Matt Corral. Instead, they only bring four, drop seven, and a crossing route is open to Braylon Sanders, who picks up a Rebel first down. Oh, and that's just why Matt Corral is so dangerous. His ability to throw off platform, that one almost looked like a no-looker to Sanders there for a big completion. They go bunch here to the right, run it straight ahead with Ely, who was drafted by the Diamondbacks coming out of high school. Jackson Prep. Well, 
This is the area of the field. They don't mind taking a shot here on second down. Second and long now. Going deep again. This is Ontario Drummond, and it's an Ole Miss touchdown. 48-yard strike from Corral to Drummond. Well, Matt Corral does a great job with his eyes here. He's got a deep out route to the right. Look at that. Moved his shoulders, moved his eyes. That brought the safety and the underneath coverage towards the sideline and left one-on-one -on -one coverage outside for Drummond. I tell you what, he is so good with his eyes. That big play to Elijah Moore mm -hmm. that we saw where the play sheet was thrown, looking guys off, continues to do it today. The last time after Ole Miss was a 91-yard touchdown to Moore. This time he looks off the safety for 48 yards to Drummond. Fifth touchdown catch of the season for Drummond. And the 23rd for Corral. So meanwhile, slow start to what was expected to be an offensive game in this one. Ole Miss up 7-0. Rodgers off his back foot, completes it high over the top of the defense and hauled in by Osiris Mitchell. And a flag came in after a gain of 18 and Mitchell slow to his feet. There's no foul for targeting. The result of the play is a first down. A couple of big hits from the Ole Miss secondary in this one. Peyton knocked down a moment ago, and now it's Mitchell. Take another look. And this is the air raid. Watch them running to space and then finding the opening and stopping, right? That, that play can be run three, four, five different ways. And when the safeties play over the top and the underneath coverage stays and that vacancy is created, sit down and find it, right? I mean, those are the adjustments that these receivers in the air raid offense are making on the fly. Witherspoon and Johnson in the backfield at Mississippi State turning to the run game with Dylan Johnson here, the freshman from Greenville, Mississippi. You don't see a whole lot of runs from Mississippi State. Second to last in the nation with 151 rush yards total on the season. The only team with less is Utah, and Utah's only played one game. And you know who doesn't care? Mike Leach. He's going to do what he's going to do, and that's throwing the football. They'll find ways to, quote, unquote, run the football, like right here. Quick game ends up being their running game. But what's going to be interesting to watch is Mississippi State is the worst in the SEC in the red zone because when you're spread, those windows get smaller. Ole Miss is a bad rush defense. I think they need to run the football in the red zone. They did it twice against Georgia last week to punch in two touchdowns inside the five. Let's see if that's part of their game plan as they approach the red zone here. Hand off to Dylan Johnson, and he finds maybe two yards. More like one, and that will leave second and nine now for Mississippi State. So what are the options in for Mississippi State if they start to get bogged down the closer they get to the end zone? Well, they want to get the ball on the perimeter, right? The quick throws to the perimeter, the spacing concepts, the rub concepts that still work over the middle of the field. Those are extensions of what their run game is, right? The quick passing game. But got to get the ball on the perimeter. Look down here. Three receivers with two defenders over the top. Rodgers has time, throws on the run down the sideline, and everybody is there. Mississippi State ends up making the catch inside the five. It's Jaden Wally. 22-yard gain, and Will Rodgers threading the needle. Boy, he's becoming a playmaker, huh? This is a late throw. This throw should be now, right? Right as Wally starts to get towards that far hash, he's a little late, but a heck of a play in traffic for Wally to come down with that one. And Osiris Mitchell back on the field for Mississippi State. That's a good sign. Mississippi State has had success lately in the red zone. They've scored on seven straight red zone appearances after struggling early in the year. Rodgers to the end zone. A wobbler caught by Williams. Lost the football. Picked up by Ole Miss. A chance to run it back. And the Rebels have nothing but green in front of them. Dean Leonard 
takes it all the way down to the 14 yard line. The Canadian transfer takes it back 86 yards. They don't have a rivalry like this with the University of Calgary Dinos. That's where Leonard was playing last year. It's a quick out by Austin Williams there. The question is going to be, did he have full control? Did he make a football move there? It looked like he had it for a couple steps. And if so, this is a heck of a job by Jaquavius Marks, the true freshman running back, of stopping that from being a touchdown. As you're going to see right here, catch. That was a step, step and a half. I'd like to have a better angle and see if he had full control as he turned. Yeah, I mean, to me, look, let's stop the, is it a step, it is a step and a half? That's a catch. That looked like a catch. Yeah. He, wow. Corral kept it, avoided a tackler, and lowers his shoulder to get down to the one yard line. How about Errol Thompson? Coming through with his hair on fire right there. Almost blew it up in the backfield. Now second and goal. Parrish still a tailback. It'll be Parrish with a leap towards the goal line. Then he got his footing. And they'll say he's down just inside the one. Now third and goal coming up. Sean Preston and Errol Thompson in on the stop for Mississippi State. Here's where you got to keep an eye on that corral. Snoop Connor has entered the game for Ole Miss. The little zone keeper. They like to go zone here and keep it with Matt Corral. Scored on that a couple times. Did it against Auburn, did it against South Carolina. Tied in your bow on the left side. To throw on an RPO. Now it's a run. And he sandwiched at the one yard line. And that'll set up fourth and goal. It's another stop for Errol Thompson. Well, this is the analytics here. Fourth down. It says go. The book says go for Lane Kiffin. Said it last time as well. Didn't work out. But if you buy into the analytics, it's a numbers game, right? Yeah, seven's so more than three. It's a volume game as well. The amount of times you go for it on fourth, it's not going to work every time. But over the course of attempts throughout a game, it's going to end up being more points. And that's why you're seeing them go for it here on fourth again in the red zone. Two tight ends at the right side, including Casey Kelly. More in motion. Fake to him. Straight ahead. Connor. Touchdown. Ole Miss. Snoop Connor. Good to have Elijah Moore. Look at the movement. You see the two defenders just run with Elijah Moore. Now your support for that cutback are completely gone. Elijah Moore took two defenders there and left the wide open lane for the cutback and the touchdown for Snoop Conner. Logan on for the point after for Ole Miss. And he hugs the left upright to get that one through. At a school record for completions and attempts and an SEC record with a 623 yard afternoon. I'll tell you what, when you play man coverage against the air raid, there's a lot of grass. What does Leach want to do? He wants his guys to run to grass and attack grass against zone and drop eight. It's a little harder. That's why, look, if you're Mississippi State right now, don't panic. When a team goes drop eight, you got to be patient early on. You got to take what they give you until they get out of it. So on this drive, don't try to get 14 points on one drive. You can't do it. Right, continue to chip away and try to get Ole Miss out of this zone drop eight so you can start to take some shots. Looking at his running back instead, throws downfield wide open. That's Malik Sanders, and Sanders has a huge game for Mississippi State. 44 yards, pardon me, Jaden Wally for Mississippi State. For a true freshman. Jaden Wally has a great understanding of space. It's one of the hardest things in this offense to understand when to attack it and how to create it. A lot of guys just want to run to green grass. Well, sometimes if you do that, you, you run to allow guys to cover you. So it's about creating space, and he does a great job on this play to get to space and allow his quarterback hit a big play when they need it on a drive to come back here. 
Miss's offense isn't smoking. That's one of the heaters are trying to get fired up on the sideline. And we told you this rivalry was absurd. This is the first taste of it. <laughs> there you go, 80. Yep, that's helping. Partridge recruited Reese when Partridge was at Michigan. Here's a completion of Osiris Mitchell trying to take it all the way across the field. Got through one tackle and then got popped by Ryder Anderson. And Reese is really playing that star position. He's such a hybrid. He's a safety, but he can line up over the slot and cover like a nickelback. And also, he'll play down and around the line of scrimmage. Seen him over the top of Jaden Wally a few times, who I think Ole Miss took a little more attention to this week after seeing what he did against Georgia. Seven for 115 and a touchdown against the Bulldogs last week. Reese shows blitz. Going to come on the left side. Rodgers throws right side. And a nice catch by Wally, and he takes it down to the six-yard line. 17-yard gain, and Wally celebrates. That's a great catch right over the top of Tyler Knight, former running back. Been on either side of the ball a bunch in his career here at Ole Miss. They brought edge pressure there, too. Remember, DJ Durkin told us he asks himself often, is edge pressure worth it against this offense? You're going to be rushing three a lot. You bring that edge pressure, obviously, somebody's going to be on an island. First and goal for the Bulldogs. Rodgers in zone, leaping grab, touchdown, Mississippi State Malik Heath. And a look around for Rodgers. What a big drive. You go down 14-0 in the first quarter. Look at this throw. This is a great throw by Will Rogers on these routes. It's called goalpost routes. It's either sometimes right in front of the goalpost or not, but you want the ball to be about even with the crossbar, where only your guy can catch it. And Malik Heath at 6'3", 215, one of their taller receivers. Great play design by Leach and a great throw by right. Will Rogers. It seems like the offenses now have found their rhythm. Points start to come for both sides. Brandon Ruiz bangs through the point after. And Will Rogers was perfect. Jordan Rogers, four for four on this drive. Yeah, he's accurate. He's a young quarterback that's only getting better. And if he keeps making throws like this, we're going to be in for one today in the egg bowl. That's all right. We'll take the viewers from the Iron Bowl over to the Egg Bowl because this one's shaping up like we expected to turn into a slugfest. It was decidedly not that way. The only other time Lane Kiffin and Mike Leach met up on the gridiron. In fact, Lane told us this game cost him his job. Let's take you back to the Pac-12 2013 Washington State at USC. Cody Kessler with a touchdown run. The only offensive score of the game. Kessler was then picked up by Damane Horton. He returned it for a pick six. Horton with another interception would seal a low scoring 10 to seven game. Kiffin told us yesterday, it's a lot of folks thought that the Arizona State game is the one that got me fired from USC when he got fired on the top. He said, no, no, that was the one that cost me because it was at home, it was in the Coliseum, the booing started and he never recovered from it. And lo and behold, five head coaching jobs before he was 45, including the Raiders and Lane Kiffin and Mike Leach now going head to head in the SEC. A little more points already than that game. Yeah. How about that? The two offensive geniuses brought to the SEC <laughs> the last time they played mustered a mere one touchdown. Moore still in a quarterback here. We've seen him all over the field, but we haven't seen this from Ole Miss. And around, they're going to throw it. Corral looking deep. And a comeback route that isn't there. Nobody came back. We had just said, I wish people I could know. hear what we talked about in commercial break. That should be our second screen experience. You had just said no trick plays thus far, like you were disappointed. Yeah, and I thought one was coming. And interesting, they come out. I mean, now you're in third and forever. You come out and direct snap it a couple times in a row. You take the ball out of your a guy that should be in the Heisman Trophy conversation at quarterback. But you just knew there was going to be a trick play. And it's probably not the last one we'll see either. Man, the corral going deep down the sideline in coverage. It is caught by Braylon Sanders. And he'll take it the rest of the way. What an incredible pass from Matt Corral. And it goes for 81 yards. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter what you do on first and second down when you can drop back like that. You got a quarterback with this type of arm talent. 
Watch Corral navigate the pocket and let this one loose. It's the air that he puts on the ball that allows his receiver to adjust, and Sanders coming off a career game. Last time out with another huge catch. So the first two plays went, what, minus seven? He's just showing off. <laughs> I can't watch this. I'm gonna get I'm gonna back up, give myself some space, and then really let Corral air it out. Yeah, minus eight to be precise in the first two plays, and then 73 on the third over the top to Sanders. That's a fun sideline. Just to give you a little idea, and this is uh, you know back of the napkin math, but Matt Corral has 12 incompletions over the last three games, and he has over 1,100 yards and 12 touchdowns with no interceptions. Yeah. That's unbelievable. You know what it makes for is, is long games. So if you were planning on stopping <laughs> by Peppertown Restaurant to drive back towards Birmingham tonight, well that's going to be out of the equation. 9:44 still remaining in the second quarter. And you guys laughed at me saying 8 15, 8 30. No, he did, Kyle. <laughs> Ledetric Griffin back to receive this kickoff. Fair catch taken inside the five. Rogers 19 of 22. Miss drops eight, one really deep and incomplete. Jalen Jordan was all the way back at the 50 yard line from his free safety spot. Oh boy, Sam Williams just giving it to Charles Cross over there at left tackle. I mean, this is why you play with your hands. Defensive lineman gets his hands inside, eats up the chest. Now to get your rear end dirty. Why does, why does Jordan not get as excited about that as I, I, do? Don't I don't understand. I mean, you just have a way with words. You said a lot in that one sentence. Rogers pressured over the middle. He finds Wally again, and Wally turns it upfield, takes it to the 50 and beyond. Jaden Wally with a first down on a 29 yard catch and run. Wally going into the Georgia game, really only a little over 100 yards on the season. And you wonder, like, how does a guy come out of nowhere towards the end of the season? Well, who was the starter? K.J. Costello was the starter at the beginning of the season. And so Will Rogers, he's not working with Osiris Mitchell and Javante Payton. He's working with another true freshman. So immediately, these guys have a chemistry and a connection. You're seeing that. Incomplete trying to find Malik Heath. And he said, listen, number one with a bullet is the great. You can't go anywhere until you talk great. And he went a little Forrest Gump on us. You asked him a question about quarterbacks, and he started naming every kind of gravy, like uh, like Forrest talking about the different sh shrimp. Yeah, I don't plates. know if he, you know, he misheard me. It's a Zoom call, so you cut in and out all the time. But I was down with it. Yeah, I, I love these. Started talking about beef gravy. And I think that was what he ended up on being the best. Is the sausage beef gravy. gravy had yeah. that in there. Not a casserole fan, though. No, you take two things that are mediocre and expect something's great. That's just not how it works. That's why have meatloaf. Williams on the out route, but he did talk about once he was done with sides that the. the most important attributes for a quarterback number one accuracy number two decision making number three presence in the huddle and the ability to elevate ten others I thought it was interesting he talked about presence and, and, and just as a gravy elevates the entire dish he said look presence is different than leadership it, it doesn't have to be the vocal but the presence that Will Rogers has elevates the play of everybody around him and I thought that's what he you know put his finger on the most about what was the best aspect of Will Rogers game you're seeing a little bit of that. This offense is playing better around him. Movement again by Ole Miss, but they didn't cross in third and five. Rodgers will scramble and take it himself for a first down, and he took a hit again. That one came from Otis Reese. Nine-yard scramble for the freshman from Brandon High School in Mississippi. You mentioned, and it's been said before, that they ran the air raid down there at Brandon. And I asked Leach, I said, well, uh, do you know? I mean, were they air raid certified? How mummy? We'll do that and get guys the originator of the air raid, get guys to go through his process. And Coach Leach said, well, heck, I don't think I'm air raid certified. I don't think <laughs> Hal ever gave me the sticker. Now, first and 10 
Out route caught by Williams defender Knight fell. And it's a Mississippi State first down. Clock will stop with 41 seconds left after a gain of 13. And just man coverage. It was, it was man single high. Austin Williams working on Tyler Knight there. Tyler Knight just slips. Ole Miss mentioned, you know, talking to Chris Partridge and DJ Durkin that they needed to mix it up. You can't just sit and drop eight the entire time because they're starting to learn how to attack that. So you're seeing Ole Miss mix in some man coverage. But I'll tell you what, Mississippi State's burned them every time they've got in. There. Incomplete pass, trying to find marks. And Ole Miss has been primarily a zone team this season. So sometimes it's more difficult to mix it in. It's not something you do very often. Totally. And the one thing I'll say, the they have mixed it up where they've been playing man on the running backs and on the crossing routes and zone on the outside. And I like that mix, right? Because you take away those easy throws right over the center. And you, you force them to push the ball to the perimeter. But like I said, that time it was just straight man coverage. And here again, you got man press on the outside and single high. Let's see if they roll out of it or they stay in it. Tenth play of the drive for Mississippi State. 36 seconds left in the half. They're staying in it. It's going to get man coverage across the board here. Now they go with two safeties. Rodgers rolls, finds his running back, and down to the 12 yard line. 27 seconds. They'll stop to measure, I believe. That yeah, rolled the two man there. Rodgers at Grant. Timeout, Mississippi State. State used the timeout. Rodgers comes up limping a little bit and he's trying to shake out that right arm. Look at this, third and inches, you go empty shotgun. Mitchell in motion. Rodgers looking for development. Get a roll. Everybody's blanketed. Lob in zone. Incomplete. I mean, maybe it's the traditionalist in me. I came from a pro style system, but man, you think just get under center I mean, and just QB sneak it or, or run the football. I mean, you go empty and you're trying to take a shot here. And Ole Miss does a great job on the back end. You see Otis Reese right there in coverage. I counted that with some hesitation in, in that Rodgers just took a shot. He's taken a couple shots in this game. You have no scholarship backup quarterback. If you had a Wildcat, you put him under center, you put him right. in shotgun and let him go. So maybe just hand the ball off there, right? right? If you're planning on going for it on fourth anyway, run it twice, right? You, you, you should be able to get a, a few inches. Brown through an incompletion on third and one, and it's a lot less than one. Really fourth and inches. Corral going to throw out of the backfield. It's Marks. He's got the first down, and he is out of bounds, and the clock stops with 14 seconds left. Boy, I tell you what, if I'm a quarterback, I don't want to throw a bubble route on fourth and inches. I mean, it's a tough throw, tougher than you think, and it's a tough catch for your running back to catch that square up and make a move on a guy because he still needs to get a couple yards, but they execute it there well. All the decision making that went into the third and fourth down plays mean no timeouts remain for Mississippi State. Not like they were likely to run it anyway. Hey, you got two shots into the end zone here before you maybe reluctantly kick a field goal. Corral. Wide open on the crossing route, and it's a touchdown for Malik He. And Mississippi State finds the end zone with six seconds left in the half. And this was an all or nothing, right? You run this rub concept, mesh concept. If you get tackled short, you're going to run out of time. Got Malik Heath, who caught the touchdown earlier in the game, running across the field. Got a couple routes short of the goal line. So looks like Leach expected coverage over the top and thought maybe he could get a guy on the run, and he did. A 13 play 93 yard drive that included a fourth down conversion. It took 309 off the clock. And a slow start. If you came here for the numbers, but now pick it up, it's a 21 to 14 half. And he both touchdowns for state. So Rodgers will hit the locker room early. He was a little banged up. That jersey, especially the back of it, getting a little dirty. He's got some grass stains. Mississippi State with a couple of touchdowns today. 24 of 32 for Rodgers. Corral 14 of 22 and a couple of big ones. On his way to 253 yards of offense in the first half. Each quarterback has thrown a pair of touchdowns.
So about what we expected, even if it took a while for both teams to get their offenses humming. Cole Kubelik is down on the field and standing by is Lane Kiffin. Coach Kisman, it felt like Mississippi State's offense got a little momentum, kind of got better as the half went on. Why were they able to find more success late? Well, they did a good job there in two minutes. We didn't, you know, we got 21-7. We got the ball in the 10-yard line going in to make it 28-7 and, and turn into a blowout. And now we got ourselves a game. We went 90 yards, went down and scored. So not a very good job by us finishing the half. A lot of explosive plays from your offense. How do you ensure that you can continue to have those in the second half? Well, we've been doing that for a few weeks now, so we just got to keep playing really well and take care of the ball. And, uh, you know, they're not stopping us. We stopped ourselves two times in the red zone with no points. Thank you, Coach. Including a 15-play drive that got him nothing. But back-to-back 50-point -back games in SEC play for the first time in school history. Ole Miss just a hair off of that pace. A fun one here in Oxford. Let's get you back to the studio. Here's Dari. It's under the lights at Vaughn Hemingway Stadium. In a high-scoring first half, Ole Miss leads Mississippi State 21-14. Welcome back, everybody. Tom Hart, joined by Jordan Rogers. In the end, it's about what we expected, although... Missed opportunities for Ole Miss when they went for it a couple times on fourth down in the red zone. Yeah, it was. I mean, explosive plays were the story of this first half for Ole Miss. And really, we talked to Zach Garnett, the deep two coordinator for Mississippi State. So he wanted to pass things off, change some things up on the back end. But they've had safeties running with vertical routes on the outside. Corners are passing those off. And Ole Miss has had a step on a few different deep shots. And Matt Corral has capitalized on it. And after a slow start by Mississippi State's offense, the defense really helped them get back into this game a couple Big stops here, especially a fourth down stop, which spurred a drive by the Mississippi State offense, which really started to get their sea legs here in the second quarter, started to move the football and close the gap here to one touchdown by halftime. And they're, they're poised to make this a shootout. Yeah, trading drives at the end of the half, including the 15 play drive that came up empty for Ole Miss. They're 41 yards of total offense for the Rebels in the first half. Four of seven on third down. The fourth down is where they've come up shy just a little bit. Pretty good outing for both quarterbacks so far in this one. Ready to start the second half. And a line drive kick will not be returned. Cole, you got a chance to catch up with the Pirate. What did Mike Leach have to say? Well, Tom, I asked him about the offense. said, I felt like it got going there later in the first half. He said, I felt like the opportunities were there throughout the entire first half. We just missed some. Jordan mentions the turnovers. Coach Leach mentioned that as well. I went to defense and asked about the explosive plays. If you have to sit back more, he said, well, we were sitting back on most of them, but we just got to find a way to sit back even further to try to prevent some of those. Pretty low key on the sideline. Asked him earlier, uh, this week if he had seen Lane Kiffin's celebration from the South Carolina game and if he ever celebrates and he said you know on occasion I, I, I guess I might raise my arms in celebration as Ely gets surrounded and is able to drag a defender for a yard game but then he threw in a Mike Leach it wasn't even a bar but it was just him being fully transparent he said I guess I don't really react like that to my offensive play calls because I expect them to work. Expect them all to work. That's confidence, though. I think both these coordinators and head coaches, both play callers as well, they expect their offenses to put up points. They're more surprised when they don't. Right. But Lynn Kiffin does have a propensity to celebrate a little bit, and sometimes early when the ball is in the air even. And Mike Leach, much more reserved on the other side. Corral going deep again. Separation. And waiting for it is Dontario Drummond. It's another big play for Corral. And Drummond, the senior working on the true freshman, Emmanuel Forbes, number 13 out there. It's just a double move. A little slant or a hitch and go. And Forbes was a little late to react, got his eyes caught in the backfield. That one went for 36 yards. Back uh, and a quick one to Yaboa that went through his hands. Cole, you talked to Jeff Levy about the tight end, their offensive coordinator, and how the, that position, you're both specifically key to what Ole Miss wants to do. Said he is who allows them to go as fast as they really want to go because you can utilize him in space as a blocker, obviously put him in line, and he's able to get out, be flexible and athletic, take advantage of one-on-one -on -one coverage as well. Henry Parrish with the carry. They're right on top of the ball again, ready to go on third and five. And it's Parrish on the left side. 
You know, a name we really haven't mentioned tonight is Kobe Jones for Mississippi State. Really the unquestioned leader on that side of the ball, sets the tone. One of their best playmakers off the edge as well. Just hasn't been able to hit home. Corral's done a good job of escaping at times any time that pressure has gotten close. Ole Miss two for four on fourth down tonight. Four in motion. Corral, pressure! Gets away from it, slings it to the back of the end zone, and it ends up in the tunnel. What just happened? How does Matt Corral have the arm strength to do this? No idea, but look at the pressure here. One of those guys is indeed Kobe Jones, and as well as Colin Duncan there off the edge of safety. So Mississippi State dials up a pressure. Errol Thompson had the first hit at him. And I, I don't know how he gets out of these, but again, it's pressure, right? That's why I mentioned Kobe Jones. Mississippi State's got to start making Matt Corral uncomfortable in the pocket. He can't sit back there and have all the time in the world to hit these deep shots. And again, Mississippi State's defense bows up. That's been the story of the game. Third, fourth down stop of the game. Zaquavius Marks is in at running back. Against zone, they run the mesh concept, and they're able to pick up five yards. If you're Mississippi State right now, you know Ole Miss is playing. They're either going drop in cover two, pre-job dropping that linebacker down the middle of the field to stop anything deeper. They're going, going cover two main. That time, just straight zone. Just keep chipping away at it if you're Mississippi State. Center Cole Smith, the LSU transfer, has had a couple of snap issues for the Nars nose guard lined up over the top of them. We got a flag on the play after yeah, that run and a pickup of three. Personal foul, chop block, Mississippi State, number 56 and number 57. That's a 15 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Second down. That's Darian Park and Cole Smith. That is a huge penalty. Huge. Oh, probably the most important drive easily in the game so far, but this is a important moment. Four minutes left here in the third quarter. Defense is keeping you in this game by slowing Ole Miss down. I don't have an answer here. Mississippi State put together a couple long drives in the first half. Got to find a way to get a chunk play here, get yourself back into a third manageable situation. Will Rogers, 30 of 39 for 268 and a couple of touchdowns. Man rush. Rogers up balance too high and incomplete. And a shot on the receiver, Malik Heath. Cole, we talked about it uh, earlier this half. What does a nose impact make on the center in shotgun situations? Well, the problem is a lot of times when you snap the football, you're coming off the ball. Pass protection, you're snapping and getting back. You have to get depth. And when you have a zero nose, he's got a two-way go. So you can go to either A gap. The only way to really battle that is to make sure you get back, you get depth. So you have to give ground to gain ground. Well, when you're backing up and snapping at the same time and you have to get your hands up on a defender, a lot of times it's easier to let go of the football early. Got the 300 pounder Quentin Bivens on him. Rogers steps up in the pocket, steps right into trouble, and he's able to get it away to Marks, who's in taken down and lost the football, and Ole Miss falls on it. Kedron Smith. Finds the loose ball, and Ole Miss is going to be set up with a short field. Well, we'll see on the replay here. It almost looked like Otis Reese as the Mississippi State player is rolling over the top of an Ole Miss player. Maybe put his helmet or his shoulder right on that football. this is Marks looks like he rolls on top of the defender and yeah Otis Reese comes in there with a shoulder or an elbow makes contact with the football we just have to see if any part of Jaquavius Marks was down before that review complete knee down and so no fumble for Mississippi State they'll hurry up on the ball on fourth down and they'll punt it away and this will be a huge change in the field position after the review. That thing got overturned. And Ole Miss will take the punt back at the 34-yard line.
We go with the Wildcat here. Elijah Moore will take the snap. And he'll try to take off with it. They did this a couple times earlier in the quarter and then tried to reverse pass from Corral, who was lined up as a wide receiver there. Yeah, I think they learned their lesson. They ran it, what, two or three times in a row last time. Let's get out of it. Get Matt Corral back in our center. Corral hands it off, and they've got room for Jerry and Ely. Let me ask you a question. If, if that's the play you want to run, would John Rice Plumley not be a better fit? He might be. Yeah. Starter at quarterback for Ole Miss last year for the majority of the season. The only problem with that, though, is then if you want to go 10 more after that, you got to sub. Yeah. And then you allow Mississippi State to sub as well. So I think that's why they like using Elijah Moore, because good player, bad play, they get back on the ball, put Matt Corral back in the center and go. Corral pressured again, and he's able to sidearm this one. It's Jerry and Ely who takes it for a first down. Is Matt Corral holding the ball too long? A little bit. That's why I said Mississippi State was hitting home. It's not that they're they're beating the old Miss offensive lineman, but it's just that Matt Corral is waiting, waiting, waiting for things to develop. And Mississippi State, since that first quarter, has been playing well over the top. So nothing there in those shots, and Corral's forced to check the ball down. Ely will hustle back to the backfield with Corral. State rushes four. Here's Ely. They got stopped in his tracks. After he picked up three. Watch for a quick throw here at the top of your screen. Ole Miss had to get Ely out of the game, and that allows Mississippi State to sub some dudes out. That's when the Rebels wanted to go tempo. You see, though, just, just one guy out here over this bunch. Can't be that out there. Yep, they do. Trying to block the one. Great backside pursuit. And Elijah Moore was scrambling up the sideline. Aaron Brule was able to get over there to impact the play. That's the bind they put you in. They, they didn't want to walk that extra linebacker out over the bunch because then they'll just run up inside you. Third and short. And a first down run for the Rebels. Black rolling, a minute to go in the third quarter. First down. Corral looking for him. corner route, not there. Corral flush, he'll scramble up the sideline. And he's chased down from behind. And Mississippi State doing a great job of mixing up coverage. It's exactly what they want. And you're going to see this guy go back, though, into more of a cover three look. So they do run the corner from the slot. That guy backs up, gets deep over the top of that route by Elijah Moore, and then nothing there. Mississippi State mixing things up on the back end this second half. Here's Parrish to the outside. And he's able to pick up a first down for Ole Miss. It'll be first and goal. Where some of the Rebels' drives had stalled inside the 10 in the first half. And here's where you got to have a sense of urgency for Mississippi State, especially those D linemen. Ole Miss is going to go tempo and hand the ball off. It's Parrish in traffic, spins his way down to the one. And that'll set up second and goal. We are three quarters in, a scoreless third between these two high powered offenses. That Corral, the Ole Miss quarterback, will direct the Rebels to the fourth. They're knocking on the door to try and extend the lead to a two touchdown advantage. Well, the sound is a little bit different, but the fury is still there for the Egg Bowl. 21 14 as we start the fourth. Tom Hart, Jordan Rogers, Cole Kublik. First Egg Bowl between Mike Leach and Lane Kiffin. Ole Miss has second and goal from the one as we start the fourth quarter. What do they run? I like this little zone read where Matt Corral's got the option to keep it or hand it off. Henry Parrish is his running back. Here's Moore in motion. And they blow it up. Mississippi State absolutely ruined that play. Marquise Spencer, first man through. I don't know if anybody got a hand on him. Watch Marquise Spencer come straight through the B gap and blow that. That's what you call attacking the mesh. Don't give Corral the time to read anything. Just go blow it up. 
Low snap, Corral, pressured again, take it down again! Mississippi State got in the backfield, Aaron Brule comes away with the sack. Watch Errol Thompson, just a little delayed blitz right here. He's gonna come off the edge. He's got eyes on that running back. As soon as the running back goes outside to block Nathaniel Watson, he shoots the gap. Little green dog there, delayed pressure, and it hits home. 26-yard attempt for Luke Logan. Low snap, and it's handled, and Logan is able to punch it through. So penetration for Mississippi State costs the Rebels a touchdown, but the field goal is good, and it's a 10-point lead in the Egg Bowl. Series has started 1901, 93rd edition of the Egg Bowl, and Ole Miss with a 10-point lead on Mississippi State. A lot of time left in the fourth quarter. Speaking of fourth quarter, you know my favorite thing about coming to Oxford? Inevitably, the booth next door, the suite next door, hands a hot dog around the corner, around the window in the fourth quarter, and now I'm re-energized. I, I, I don't know anybody that's been that excited about a hot oh, dog. Maybe so, ever. So good. It's just a tube steak. And it's just delicious, Tom. It's the fourth quarter. And he didn't have the Brussels at snack bar last night either. No, exactly. he did not. Fair catch taken. Rodgers is the first Mississippi State quarterback in history with three consecutive 30-plus completion games. He's completed 34 tonight. A little toss in a couple of yards on the right side. Mike Leach is down a receiver. Remember Javante Payton. Took a hit earlier this game. He's out for the remainder of the game. Back on the sideline is three close. Second and seven. Rogers sideline shot. It is wow, what a hit. He held on to it. Wally comes away with the first down grab. This is an unbelievable catch. Watch this. He, he grabs it with one hand, and before he pulls it in, he looks at the safety. He sees him coming. I mean, that's unbelievable. One-handed catch on the outside. Staring down. Look at him. He looks right at him. He knows he's coming. Somehow holds on to that. True freshman, Will Rogers, to true freshman, Jaden Wally. Wally, eight catches, 156 yards. That one went for 27. Back-to-back 100-yard -back games for the freshman receiver. Here's Johnson. Squirts through for a couple. And one thing that Wally did on that play that you don't see a lot of true freshmen is you get a defender underneath you, you stack it. Right, you don't allow him to wall you and push you towards the sideline. You get back on top of it and allow your quarterback the decision to throw it on a line in front or over the top. That time, Rodgers put it on the line right in front. Wally did a great play. Pressure coming. Rodgers will scramble, flag back down, and Rodgers takes this one down to the 12-yard line on the run. 15-yard gain, see what the flag's about. Maybe in the area of defensive holding. Holding on the defense, number 23. That foul will be enforced half the distance. First down. It's on Ja'Cory Hawkins, and Mississippi State will have first and goal for the six. You see it on the right side of your screen here. Yep. Right there, anytime you get a Receiver and changing directions. Can't hook him around, around the, the waist. This is the area of the field that last week against Georgia, Mississippi State ran the football effectively. Haven't really done that tonight. Another slant to Williams, and he spins his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Mississippi State. Looked like he was stopped at the two. But he stayed on his feet for a seven-yard touchdown reception. 
You know what's crazy about that play? Both the widest receivers on each side didn't know the play. They threw their hands up before and they didn't have a route. This was strictly a two-man route on the inside here. Wally going vertical and Austin Williams working underneath. Those are the only two guys running routes. Malik Heath down here didn't run a route because he wasn't given one. On the other side, the receiver as well was waiting for the play call and just kind of trotted downfield. Take the play off, fellas. Yeah. We got it covered. Brandon Ruiz for the point after. And yeah, Mississippi State with a huge drive to pull it in three. A 10 play, 75 yard drive that took 549 off the clock. We're poised for a frantic finish. Egg Bowl flashback 1983, foreshadowing. Watch the flags blowing in the wind. Mississippi State had a 17 0 lead. They were down by one with seconds remaining. Then the wind picked up. Look at that ball get stuck in the air, come down short of the crossbar. Cross and Artie Cosby's game winning field goal came up short and left. Ole Miss held on for the one point win. It was the biggest comeback in Egg Bowl history. Mike Leach's team. Trail 14 nothing in this one. Got a couple of touchdowns in the second quarter. They just the wind within a field. The winds have changed. <laughs> Good one. How does that happen? How do you kick a football and it goes backwards? It just straight backwards. Stopped. Only in the egg bowl. Dennis Jackson returns this one out to the 23 yard line. Corral has touchdown passes of 48 and 81 yards, respectively. He's going deep here. That's Jonathan Mingo. And Mingo takes a pass midfield. 31 yard gain on first down. Rebels will hurry to the line. Great penetration by Mississippi State again. A flag came in on the tackle. That's going to be a face mask on Kobe Jones. Just stuck his hand out to stop the runner and incidentally grabbed a little face mask. There is no foul for a face mask. Oh. Second down. Good. Yeah, I saw this live, and you can see his hand gets up there, but does it hook? I don't, I don't know if it, uh, it turned the head. It did turn the head. So you, they make those gloves pretty sticky now. Though. Well, it, it doesn't have to be face mask proper. Totally. Second and 16 is what's remaining. Corral looking for more. He's covered. Everybody's covered. So Corral will try to run it. That's going to leave third and eight after a nine yard scramble. The good teams make great adjustments, right? And Zach Garnett has made a great adjustment on the back end. Defense coordinator for Mississippi State. His safeties are playing much more over the top. They're not getting their eyes lost in the backfield. And Corral and Ole Miss continue to try to take shots that just aren't there. Yeah. It seems like they're making Corral think a lot. Yes. Which is what Arkansas did and forced him into some bad decisions. Quick hitter, Elijah Moore, and he takes it for a first down. Corral in traffic, lobs in zone. It is. Incomplete with multiple flags. Yaboa tried to climb over the top of his defender, Colin Duncan. Pass interference on the defense, number 19. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. Well, it's an easy call when the defender doesn't get his head around to play the football, right? You can you can make contact if you're playing the football, but watch Colin Duncan here. Does ne just doesn't find the football, gets his hands on, tries to turn late, but he's already made significant contact by then, and that's an easy call. First and goal for Ole Miss. Let's come. 
Going around more. Never got in position. I've called out that corner out a couple times, right? Yeah. And they've ran it a few times, but in zone. That time they did have man coverage. They had the look they wanted. But Elijah Moore looked inside at first. Matt Crowell threw that ball outside to the corner. And just a little miscommunication. Healy through the left side. Motors down the goal line. They will shove him across. Touchdown, Ole Miss. The entire offensive line created the convoy. Boy, center Ben Brown, right tackle Royce Newman. Like they both got in there. Watch this. Healy gets a great initial push. And then, yeah, watch Newman, watch Ben Brown. Yaboa got in there. Ninth touchdown of the season for Jerry and Ely. Ole Miss to extend it to a double digit lead again. And the point after is good. Nine plays, 77 yards. 258 off the clock. Ole Miss turns to its ground game, one of the best in the country to push it in. But Hemingway Stadium, SEC Network Football, presented by Auto Owners Insurance. 31-21, Mike Leach's team down by 10 with 4.48 to go. Eighty-four, uh, 94 loves it. Dancing were allowed in town. You would have heard this at the library last night. State will let it go. And a touchback. <laughs> Offensive lineman need love every now and then, baby. How you feeling, Cole? Love it. A little cold down there? It's chilly. Rewarded with Brussels sprouts. Rogers steps up, going deep. Incomplete, no flags. Two defenders back there for Ole Miss. Kedron Smith and Jalen Jordan with the coverage on Osiris Mitchell. Really the first shot from Mississippi State in a few quarters. I mean, it feels like a while since they've been able to push the ball downfield. Come out, take a shot now, and get back into ball control mode. Got four minutes, 41 seconds left. All your timeouts, so time's not an issue, but picking up first downs is. Got to get two scores, so important drive here. Ole Miss drops three deep. Rodgers. Tip caught first down Mississippi State. Oh, Lakia Henry sitting in zone coverage. Reed Nye's number zero here. Just oh, just out of his reach. It's Aquarius Bivy with only his third catch of the season. Rogers pressured. Take it down. Land Sharks get him. It's a loss of five. First sack of the night for the Rebels. Sam Williams working off the edge. This just can't happen every Mississippi State. He got five to block three. And Sam Williams just wins with speed on the outside on Charles Cross, the left tackle. Ole Miss is not hiding it. They're going to rush three. Right now, they're ends. Sam Williams. He's able to find his running back out of the backfield. And that's probably exactly what Coach Leach in the timeout said to Will Rogers. Hey, we're going to try to take a shot here. It's not there. Just check it down to the back. They're playing zone right now. Pick up something, and we'll come back to it. But those are the things that as a quarterback, you get sacked on a, on a first or second down. Everything starts moving fast. And you don't have time to think about those little things. Third down seven. Rogers lobs. Batted away. Fantastic play on the back end by Dean Leonard. Going back to Malik Heath. And a big touchdown grab where he climbed the ladder. Will Rogers trying to go back to him up high. Just really good underneath coverage. And here's your ball game. 
If I'm Will Rogers, I'm looking for Jaden Wally, my true freshman that's been making plays all night. He's going to be in the slot at the top of your screen right there. I'm looking for him in the middle of the field. Fourth down, seven. Rodgers moves the pocket on the run across his body. Caught first down for Mississippi State. They went to Spivey. He's got two catches tonight to match his season total. And with 336, Mississippi State is looking at a first down from the 30. That's a great job. Wally went straight up the seam, took two defenders with him, and Will Rogers bought time and threw right to that vacated space. Rodgers had all day then. Slings it to the outside, a gain of a couple perhaps for Dylan Johnson. Here's the previous play. Working to his right. And that's just such a good job by Spivey to work back inside, right? You either got to work back towards the quarterback, but knowing it's fourth down, you don't want to shorten it. You want to get back to the middle of the field where there's opening. Both of these quarterbacks do a sensational job throwing back across their body, as you talked about off platform and on the run. Wally has moved to the slot on the left side. He's the inside receiver. See things up here a little bit. Second and nine, looking for Wally in the seam. He's there. He's got it at the 10. And it'll be first and goal, Mississippi State. There it was. Wally attacked in the middle of the field. They've had it time and time and time again tonight. Now, you got two minutes and 40 seconds left. They're going to pause here for a first down. Only two timeouts. So you're always thinking about, we need two scores. So you got to preserve some time on the back end. You have to take a few shots in the end zone here. Can't afford to let this clock tick down any lower. See how quickly they can get it in. Two and a half to play. Rodgers looking for Wally. Covered by Reese. And incomplete. It's okay. Stops the clock. Allows Mike Leach to take a few extra seconds to think about what he wants to dial up right here. Be surprised if they come back to that play they scored the touchdown on. I believe their first touchdown. They threw a little jump ball to Malik Heath. Right in front of the goalpost. The problem is Ole Miss is playing zone with a safety right there. Look right, back left, back right again. Bobbled and caught. Clock will run. And they're looking at third and goal from the seven on the completion of the running back, Johnson. Williams in motion. End zone shot. Leaping attempt incomplete. Batted away. And Mississippi State had a chance to Malik Heath again, but he came down awkwardly. And that was that play. Remember I said I thought they'd run it last time? That was that jump ball play to Malik Heath. Again, just this one-on-one -on -one matchup. They like the size of Heath on the outside at 6-3. Just, yeah, it didn't look like he... Yeah, it's hard to tell. Hard to tell if it happened just before the jump. Yeah. Or... Well, hopefully it's just a cramp, but he didn't react like it was just a cramp, did he? No. No. Brandon Ruiz, little used on the season, just five of six. Essentially an extra point, a little bit longer. 25-yard attempt. Gets it through. Got a touchdown game with 2.08 to go. Mississippi State has allowed 545 yards of offense to Ole Miss tonight. They have only one timeout remaining. And Mississippi State's going to bring out two kickers here. So they want to try to get Ole Miss to be balanced. Give the illusion they're going to, or could, kick it in either direction. They got Ruiz and Jace Christmas. Fake to the left, go back to the right, and Ole Miss will cover it at midfield. 2.08 remaining. Mississippi State still got the timeout, so they could get the ball back with a few seconds, but. Corral hands it off, and 
Elijah Moore gets a couple yards across the right side. Timeout used by Mississippi State. Final we had a fantastic timeout. visit with Elijah yesterday. And as part of that conversation, we talked about his versatility offensively and learning the running back position. He said, I embrace it. I love the fact that it takes work to learn a new position, and I want to prove that I can be versatile at every level. Well, and especially the next level. You're seeing those slot guys be used in a lot of different ways at the NFL level. And here's the thing. I mean, he's such a good route runner that you can put him anywhere. He can run routes out of the backfield. He can run it out wide. He's best out of the slot. Almost 60 of his receptions are probably well over 60 now after this game have come from that slot position. And he's a guy that, look, I know there's a lot of good receivers out there, but he should win the blending. It shouldn't even be close. Well, he set the school record today with his 12th catch. Already a single season record with 86 receptions and a couple of games remaining for Ole Miss before any postseason action. Double digit receptions in seven of eight games this year. He said when Kiffin got the job as they go to Ely here on second down. He said he told me get ready be in shape. You're going to run a lot and catch a lot of football. Clock ticking 150. So you get a stop here and force a punt and Mississippi State will have some time remaining. Yeah, not much probably in the maybe 22nd range. Lane's hiding behind the placards. Got to come up with a stop here first though. State's got great penetration up front. More in motion. Corral will keep it. And he does get stopped. Picked up a couple. 111. Now 110 on the clock. And he'll take this down to right about 30 seconds. Probably take a delay game to back up and punt this ball away. And if you're Ole Miss, you, you got to know they're going to come after this one. So Brown's got to speed up his process. Last thing you need is a block or a tip. State has not blocked a punt this season. 31 seconds left in the egg bowl. Nobody back for State. They didn't come close to it. Mac Brown's going to punch this one down inside the 10 and get into the end zone. 23 seconds remain. Rodgers, a freshman from Brandon, Mississippi. Grew up an Ole Miss fan. Now it's State. And he completes that one to the edge. You got a hurry. Ball came out. And Ole Miss took it away. It's Tylen Knight, the former running back, wide receiver, defensive back, do everything man for Ole Miss. And he celebrates in the end zone while the officials talk this over. It was an incomplete pass. Okay. It will be second down at the 15-yard line. Please reset the game clock to 19 seconds. And I agree with you. The one previously, he was taking a step downfield as yep. he was turning. Again, I just, he got that ball, right? And he catches it, and he turns. I know it doesn't get tucked. And yes, it is bang, bang. Completions are in the eye of the holder. I disagree. I think he, I think that was a drop. I agree yeah. he was turning, but I never saw that he had full control. All right, so Mississippi State still has life. Again, you got to throw it past the sticks because you got to bank on the fact that if it doesn't get out of bounds, you get a quick pause as they reset the chains, and you can hopefully get on the ball and spike it to try to get a second play. He's going deep down the sideline into triple coverage, and Ole Miss... Caught oh. for a first down. You got to get up on Fantastic the ball. Fantastic play with 12 seconds and ticking, and everybody will sprint down the field. Spivey with a 41-yard reception. They spot the ball. One second ticks. He spikes it, and they lost two seconds. Fantastic clock management by Will Rogers. Wow. I mean, this is essentially a Hail Mary before a Hail Mary, right? I mean, he's just throwing this up. Everybody's just running straight. Spivey, I don't know how he comes down with it. Did he take it from him at the end? I think he did. I think he took it from Dean Leonard, 24. No, no, he had that the whole way. Yeah. So wow. second down at the 44-yard line. You could try a quick throw to the top here. See how much room they're yep. given. 
and try to get maybe five, ten yards to take another shot into the end zone. A lot of cushion. That's what I do. Wally, number 31, their leading receiver in this one. Yep. They do just that. Up the sideline and out of bounds. It's Spivey again, the sophomore from Monroe, Louisiana, having a career night. Look, you can't ask for any better. Uh, any two better plays right there. You get a big chunk play to get you on this side of the 50. Then you pick up six, seven, eight yards to make sure that you can throw it into the end zone. It doesn't have to be a 55, 60-yard throw. He's going to have to throw it about 48, 52 yards here after he buys some time. Got to buy time to get your receivers into the end zone. Five seconds left. Three, two, end zone shot. Who wants it? It is incomplete. Knight was at the middle of that one. It falls to the turf, and Mississippi State comes up just short. What an effort by Rodgers and a celebration in Oxford for the Rebels. We knew it was going to be close. We got Leach, we got Kiffin. And it's going to be the start of a heck of a rivalry. The 93rd edition of the Egg Bowl belongs to Ole Miss. Only 16,000 in the crowd to see it and feel it. Wasn't as loud as it normally is, but just as intense. Ole Miss escapes 31 24. More football coming your way. Let's get you to the classic. Let's get you to Columbia. It's Georgia, South Carolina. Taylor Zarzer, all yours.